Today we're going to talk about connecting three inductors in parallel. Now we're going to talk about inductors today that have negligible resistance. So what we see is our basic parallel rules still apply. Our source voltage is going to be the same across branch one as across branch two as across branch three. And also the current flowing through branch one and the current flowing through branch two and the current flowing through branch three are all going to add up to the total current. We also still see our formula of Q, or the reactive power in our circuit, is still equal to I squared times the inductive reactance in, this, in that branch. So if we're talking about inductor one specifically, the reactive power there would be the current flowing through that branch squared times the inductive reactance of that branch. Inductive reactance is the exact same. Inductive reactance is still two times pi times the frequency of the circuit times the inductance of that inductor. So when we're adding three inductors or any number of inductors in parallel like this, we get a new formula. Because we're giving multiple paths for current to flow, we see our inductance actually adds up inversely now. So we're going to go 1 over L total equals 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3. So we're going to add them up all inversely. So at the end, we know that our total inductance is actually going to be smaller than each of those branches. Once we do that, we want to be looking for our total inductive reactance for the circuit. Now there's two different ways, or a few different ways we can go about doing that. Two of the main ones are we can simply take our total inductance, which we calculated before, and put it into our inductive reactance formula. End up being, we could go XLT equals 2 times pi times frequency times the total inductance. So that'll work for us. Another way is we know our inductive reactance is ohms. And ohms in parallel we know add up inversely. So we can also go 1 over XLT equals 1 over XL1 plus 1 over XL2 plus 1 over XL3. Either of those ways should come up with the same answer. So when we're looking at this circuit here, um, we're going to get a couple different numbers from the circuit. When we do our total inductance, we should end up with 5.455 millihenries. We can take that and figure out our inductive reactance, and whichever way we do it, we should end up with 2.056 ohms. As well, our last couple steps in most circuits are the current as well as the reactive power. And in this circuit right here, we should get I equals 97.276 amps. And finally, we end off with a reactive power. In this case, it would be QXL of 19.455 kilo. Bars. Well, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.